it's that time again where we talk to you about things that you might like in in our review segment where we talk about things that you might like. Let's see, talk about our games that we've been playing. Okay, but first, we when we talk about that, you might want to head on over to youtube.com backslash hack the dino and hit that subscribe button and that like button and leave a comment because we need people to manipulate that algorithm. Just take it out for dinner and, and make it think that you, you're going to be a loving companion and then leave you. Just war on Alice it. Uh, you then you can head over to twitch.tv backslash hack the dino and follow us there. It doesn't cost anything and you get valuable content such as me talking words with my mouth and other things. Or you might want to just listen to us over on podcast land where they, they have SoundClouds and, and iTunes. And hey, so game reviews. Let's talk about that. Dan, what are you reviewing this week? I am reviewing Ghostbusters Remastered on the Perth 4. Ooh. The Perth of Fur. The Perth of Fur. Um, so this came out just recently. Do you know when it was, Floppy? A bit uh, of an anthropologist about this last stuff. Last year? Last year? Last year. Somewhere last year. Um, so this is uh, basically the remaster of the one that came out on the PS3. It has all the original cast voice actors, so all the Ghostbusters. It has the, the lady. All of them? Yeah, all of them. Do they rip it off the master? Because Ivan Reitman's like, you know. Well, it came out before he died. Did it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, because it's a remaster. Yeah, it's a remaster. Oh. And they actually the start of this one has like in memory of him. Um, uh, like the you know the the girl um, that works for them, Walter Peck's characters in it, like the actual actor and everything, like the whole thing. It's written by Dan Aykroyd and Ramis. Um, so it's the original people that wrote Ghostbusters. So theoretically, you could go to the a point of saying it's basically Ghostbusters three. Yeah. Like. It's got all the humour. It's got all the fun. It's very Goza based, which I have always liked. Goza, love as- Goza, such good steamed things. Um, it them. first starts off with a whole bunch of like callbacks to the film. Um, you know, you're fighting Goza, you fight Marshmallow Man at the start, and it it, it it's basically. Do you break yeah. things? Yeah. So you oh, bust yeah. them. Yeah. So. Um, as you see, it's really fun just to walk through. Um, <laughs> the level of detail is really good. Like to walk through just your Ghostbusters. Uh, Base was it headquarters, whatever it was called. Fire station. Fire station. You get to see all like you know the stuff that you know that they've done. You've got the painting in there from Ghostbusters two that you can walk up and talk to and stuff like that. Um, it's just yeah, really really cool. And, and as someone like me who is a massive Ghostbuster fan, it's awesome. You play the new Ghostbuster, uh, the unnamed Ghostbuster, which they don't even say. They're like, oh, we don't even need to know your name. You're not going to last long enough. Like the rookie, so you just got rookie written on you. <laughs> you just called rookie, <laughs> which I kind of liked as well. Uh, the ghost, like the you have obviously you're, and because you're the new guy, you have to test all their new equipment because <laughs> it's dangerous. Like you're the crash test dummy. But the catching the ghost in it is really fun. So you have to wear down the ghost, and then that event eventually grabs them. Then you have to throw them around a bit. And then you have to manually press square to pull, throw the trap out, and then you have to pull them in to, down into the trap. And it really feels like you're you're doing the Ghostbusters thing. And the destruction is amazing. Like as you're firing your proton beam everywhere, like deaths are exploding, everything's catching on fire. There's heaps of good destruction uh, in this. And you know, you don't um, you get told how much you're smashing, but you don't have to pay for it. I really like that in the typical <laughs> Ghostbusters fashion. I'm, I'm drooling now. I'm getting so into this is fitting. <laughs> Um, it's just like really, really good. So you've got like four types of beams now as, as you go through, you, like, you unlock them kind of thing and you get like a, a shotgun kind of blast beam. You get a blue beam, which is a status beam to slow ghosts down and stuff like that. You get the slime gun, you know, from Ghostbusters 2. So you can, um, slime and you get, and you've also got bits where you can uh, pull out your PKE meter and that goes into a first person mode. And that's how you find like collectibles and stuff like that. Like by going around, you can also find the ghost with it. And you can also scan ghosts and baddies and it tells you their weak points. So, you know, this ghost is susceptible to the, the status beam or this beam and stuff like that. So it's it's not complicated, but it's really fun. And any items you find, when you go back to your base set, there's a lot, like, you know, littered around the boat, Ghostbusters headquarters. Um, the music is super OG. It's all those classic, you know, dun, 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 themes that you've heard, the Ghostbusters theme, all the, you know, when like the action starts. It's all those, like, songs that you just... You've heard before, and you really like get into it. Um, yeah, basically, um, there were some bits I didn't like. Sometimes um, I just didn't know where what I had to do. I got to a point. I'm busting ghosts. I'm killed them all. They're all dead. I'm in a room with everyone. Everyone's just standing there. Oh well, yeah, and, they're all dead. 
And oh yeah, that's yeah, true. <laughs> um, and then and then there's no cutscene, there's no nothing, there's no door to open, and I actually had to run back into another room and then run back in for the cutscene to start, <laughs> like you know stuff like that. Like it just kind of and it happened to me like three times. Yeah, you know, so I was just like, it kind of, it's not really a glitch. It's just like some dodgy game making. The packs look wicked. And every time you like change to a different pack, a uh, uh, gun type, your pack goes like, whoosh, and bits come out of it. And, and all your life and your, your, how much you can fire is, all the information is on your pack. And you have to actually have to, um, you have to reload by like, uh, pressing L1 and that kind of like, uh, releases the heat out of your pack, like, psh, like cools it down. And it's just, they really got this game right. And like you go, and you go to all the cool Ghostbusters places. Like you go to the hotel that Slimer's uh, in it. Uh, so you go back to the library and you catch the library ghost lady, you know, the one that bursts out and stuff. And yeah, just a, you, you fight Stay Puft right at the start. And they mention, like, it's a bit weird that it's like kind of like the first time. <laughs> Even like, like, yeah, but it's because Goes is back because there's a Gozer exhibition. And yeah. And yeah, the level of destruction is this. It's just, it's just fun. And you're always, they're all, they're all wisecracking. They're all saying that. You're pissing off hotel clerks. You, Walter Peck is so angry at you. <laughs> like, it's so good. Yeah, I loved it. Basically, um... It was on special, wasn't it? I got it on special. It was $15.83. But this week, PlayStation gave everyone 15... Not everyone. Yeah, I don't... Do you know what... Did you work out why? No. I think it might have been people that... Are you on PlayStation Plus? Yep. Maybe oh no! It, they gave me. They sent me an email going, "You're you're great." Did you get it floppy? The fifteen yeah, bucks? I didn't. Yeah, well, they gave fifteen bucks in people's wallets, so I got it for eighty three cents. <laughs> 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 and I've been playing it all week. I I put down Ghost of Tsushima and uh, Avenge, Avengers and started playing this, and I can't stop it. I mean, the, the cutscenes are all like super budget because they're the old. They haven't bothered updating the cutscenes, the video. So they look really bad, like these bits we're seeing on the screen now. Look like how blurry they are. <laughs> and then it goes to the game. It's like super crisp 4K, um, which I'm fine with. Like the there's so much little level little details. It's just a beautiful game. Go every Ghostbusters fan, fan, the Bushman. Ghostbusters fan should play it. Flops. I was going to say I I haven't finished this, but I played a bit of this too. The one thing that really stood out for me was you know how you're talking about the different uh, beams and then you grab the ghosts and you have to pull them in. You felt weight in it. Yeah. Like, it and was because, crazy. And it's also as well, like, you have to pull, like, because the ghosts, you have to get them into the, you know, that beam uh, of the trap, in yeah. that that, uh, that cone shape. And the ghosts, like, run in different directions. And you have to pull them in the opposite direction to keep them in the, the trap cone. And it's just cool fun. Like, I, I legitimately felt like my controller was being pulled when they were running. Like, it was, it's unreal how well they did that. Yeah, and just hearing those beams, like, like when he's, like, you're going up in the elevator, he's like, power up, dude. And you're like, Bzzz. And then the beam comes out and like, and I'm like, yeah, it's a sick. Give it a go. You have to be a Ghostbusters fan, though. I mean, you can't come in cold turkey into this, never seen a Ghostbusters film or care about it. It's definitely for, you know, for the diehard old, old, old cob, cobwebbers. The old people. The cobwebbers. Like old us. guys. The salt and pepper mix man. Speaking of old people, I've been playing something that old people play with all the all the time. And they shouldn't because it's not their target demographic. But they go on the internet and complain anyway. Oh, uh, I got some Mario Lego. Woo! Which you can see here. Huh. This is my little Mario boy. Lego Mario time! <laughs> uh, so he switches up. I, I know we can't really see it there. Can I look? No, no, not yet. Here we go. There's Mario there. Does he blink? Oh, he, Whoa. he blinks and moves. Yeah, yeah. He, he's fully animated. And what's the best thing I've got? You can get these little packs. Um, and these little packs, these are blind packs. And they're five bucks each. And you actually build little enemies. And the best part is he can come and jump on him. Hang on, I'll take him off his stand. Because it's, it's all Bluetooth enabled. Oh my god, that eye thing really creeps me out. So he goes, do 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 do. Damn and you. Do the other one. Each one makes different sounds. That sounds but, like the same sound. It's the same sound. Yeah, it's the same sound. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the spiny? There he is. No, you got the spiny. It's a little spiny guy here. See if it makes a different sound. There we go. Huh. Oh my god, his animations on his face really creep me have out. A look at his face. Yeah, you yeah, have a look at his face. Anyway, so yeah, this is really really cool. Um, I wasn't going to get this originally, but uh, <laughs> I was always going to get it. Who, who, who am I kidding? Um, so I got uh, this. This is the starter set that comes with uh, Mario, uh, and then you download an app and the instruction booklets uh, in the app, 
Uh, I got my daughter the Yoshi one. I've also got the Koopa Trooper one. Um, I think I also have to get the Bowser Castle very, very soon. Very um, soon. And then I also got uh, the big NES, the big boy NES. Here it um, is. It's not here oh. because I... I, so I'm moving house soon, and I don't have any room to... That NES uh, is crazy, eh? Have you oh, made it, it looks yet? Great. No, I don't have any room to put it. See you later. Uh, I don't <laughs> have any room to put it, uh, so it has to stay in the box until uh, I move house and have a place to put it. But it looks amazing. It The box is probably this big. How much, can I ask TV? how much it was? It was 350 Australian dollars. That's not that bad. How many pieces is it? 2,647. You get half an Atari for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true. I, I missed out. I, I only half an Atari without controls. Yeah. Yes. Yes, not not the full version. Anyway, um, it's really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and it is I, an A-game video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I recommend it to everyone because it's a good fun time, especially these little blind packets. These are great, and they look really, really cool. So you can just add them into your... Yeah, well, they, they're freestanding as well. Brain cover, close up, please. They're like freestanding, um, and they just look really cool on the shelf, and they're really simple to build. And uh, each box comes with two sets. So there's 10 in each set, and each box has 20 in them. Um, and, yeah, they Nintendo have guaranteed that uh, there's a full set in each. Is that- I can't see... Um- I can't see kids liking these much. It's more of a collector shelvy kind of vibe. Because I just, no, I just so, saw like a game playing on the thing. Where, like, would kids like to do that? Yes. Like this? Like- so my niece, whoops, my niece, uh, after she saw me getting it, went out and bought a whole set for her birthday. My niece is how old is she? Six. Yeah, that makes sense. Wrong. Uh, how are you? Wrong. <laughs> a little bit older. My daughter, who is twelve, also wanted because uh, I called her up when I went in there. Because uh, I went in early uh, of opening because I wasn't sure how busy they were going to be. So I went to the city early and walked up to Kmart and they were still in the cage where they used to unpack them. <laughs> and I sent up to the lady and went, um, Can I have one of each? Can, can, can I just, can I? And she goes, yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, loser. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I, 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 I do Creepy old guy. Yeah, I get that a lot. Anyway, everyone should play with Lego because it's fun. And once I've, I, I don't know, I've decided if I can be bothered filming me putting together the big nest Bad boy. Oh, Again, he's pretty good at this level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a Mario maker. Yeah. Trooper. Um, yeah. Get him. Fun. Five bucks for those little little things. You should get them at least. I think if I wanted to get... I think I'd only get Mario because his face is cool. I like the anime thing, uh, animated I face. I don't. That really freaks me out. All right, Floppy. What have you been doing? Um, I have been playing a game. Game of the year. Game of, yeah, possibly game of the year. It is going to be a game. It is definitely a game out this year. <laughs> Um, I have been playing for Get some. Out this year, do you remember last show you made fun of me for mate for playing bad games? Yeah, yeah. Well, I decided to run with that. <laughs> <laughs> I played Fast and Furious Crossroads. Is this out, or did you get a code or something? Uh, no, out. it's out. I bought it. Oh, look at that! I bought. Is that this. a doll? <laughs> I will tell you first and foremost. Like I am a bit of a fan of the Fast and Furious films. Mm-hmm. I'm. I like a bit of a guilty pleasure. Um, this game, no hot on the piece of trash. <laughs> did you ever play 007 Racing on the PS1? No. Well, if you did, you may want to play it on the PS4, and now you can. <laughs> Takedown? It's a bit With this. burnout. So, I mean, it's got Vin Diesel, it's got Michelle Rodriguez, and it's got Tyrese Gibson, all from the movie franchise. You know, it, taken from the movie franchise, so it has this humongously successful and incredibly loaded. Role. Yeah, it was a weird role where it goes around like an axis. Um, movie franchise to take from, and it bloody sucks. <laughs> so why does it suck? Yeah, you give every game like a bit of a bit of effort, and like you play Jumanji and all that. And you're like, it's yeah, fine. And I found and this good game stuff, you're just flat out. I found a- good points in Jumanji. I have uh, I have recommended Jumanji to people. Floppy is furious. <laughs> Floppy is furious. <laughs> Um, it has <laughs> PS1 gameplay. Like it has PS3, sometimes PS2 graphics. Uh, so this game is all driving, which is fine. It's a Fast and Furious game. Are you a Fast um, and Furious fan? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, same here. Um, oh. it is. So it's all driving, uh, and it's in what looks to be a lot of the time an open world, but it's not. It is locked into these linear paths where you can see that see that yellow sort of target. If you try and go down a side street. You will hit an invisible wall. 
and yes, it'll bounce great. you back. Like you can see here, there is no alternate paths. There is nothing in this giant open world city that they could have in a Fast and Furious game where you could be doing things like Burnout and you could be doing things like Takedown used to sort of do, but in like a Need for Speed style um, setting. Looks like they made it in Dreams. <laughs> and it has... <laughs> oh, the better. other thing is it has real... Oh, they should have made it in Dreams. It might have been better. Um, they have re- it has really weird damage. It's like horrible... These horrible physics. So you might nudge a car at a really low speed and it'll literally flip and do like eight flips and fly to the side <laughs> of the screen. Well, that's what happens when Vin Diesel in real life hits a car. But then I'll hit a tree, a tiny little tree, and it'll stop me in my tracks and flip my car over. Didn't, it, didn't the rock punch a missile though? Yeah, probs. Um, the it's, trailer it's, for the latest film has a him driving across a <laughs> rope bridge that has become cut at one end and he's driving up the rope bridge that is descending into a cavern because physics. physics. That makes sense. Though. Um, are fine. Look, I think I, the graphics are terrible. Uh, we're in a PS4, Xbox One, almost in PS5 and Series X. These cars have no reflections on them. No, we're at the end of PlayStation 4 generation. Yeah, that's what I said. We're, oh, yeah, that yeah. thing's cool. But look at that. Everything looks matte and flat. Um, some they should have gone for a cartoon cool. look if they were going to do they this. Should've. Hey, it would have been fine. You see uh, lamp posts and stuff when you're driving around. All the lamp posts are the same shade all the way down. They look like a flat painting. It is horrible, man. Uh, there's no reflections or no color variances, especially at nighttime when you have street lights and things like that. Ooh. Dialogue, fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, do you remember where this was premiered? Where they first announced? Yeah, this? it was at game uh, the game awards. It was Wait, the last out. announcement of last year's Game Awards. But I dare oh, say that was because something got game. leaked. Like, I think that's because Alex, uh, the, the Half-Life got <laughs> leaked. And they had... To, <laughs> look at this. It's so bad. Um, one, of the, one of the weirdest things about it... Uh, so you... There's weird mechanics. Like, it's not all just dra- driving from A to B. Sometimes you have to do things like, mm, hacking. And so you... <laughs> so, you get, so you get into your hacking car. <laughs> Now, your hacking car is like, imagine, I don't know, a Mitsubishi, maybe <laughs> a Lancer. Like, yeah, Lancer, with like a four antenna router bolted to the top of it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and that's what makes it a hacking car. And then, like that, with that, with that gun thing, Cannon is there, you just have a router, like a big ass router. But we gotta do some routing. And, and then you have family. to point your car, you have, to drive, to, a, you have to drive to a square. Park your car in the square so that you're facing the place you want to hack and then just do a button press timed, which is the same button every time. Oh, God. That's, that's, a that's how you hack in real life. It is. Haven't you seen hackers? No, they surf on um, surfboards through the Wild Wild website. Um, so, look, I played it. I gave it some time. I don't buy it. <laughs> don't do it. How like, much is it? That's it's a better, a, it's this is a nine. Game. So this is a full price hundred dollar game. I thought this was an add on to your to, Mate, to the Ouya. This should be three dollars, <gasps> and they pay you three dollars to. Yeah, this, should, this looks like a mo- micro machines. Four dollars eighty eight or something. Do those mobile racing games look better than this? It is. You know what I mean? Like they have more reflections on the cars and everything. I don't. Under, I, I feel like it got to a point, and they went. You know what? We're not pumping any more money to this. They went. Ah, just release it. That's what it feels like. It is rubber. Yeah, this would have been better just to shelve. Yeah. And like, and I mean Literally. shelve like a pill up your bum. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we've been playing and reviewing for you, the the consumer. Consume consume all of this over at our places. I would like to thank the Patreons. Good. Thank you. I like them as well. So do I. How do you feel about the Patreons, Floppy? Cool, guys. I also enjoy Patreons and the money that they give us in order to produce this fine show. Who who are the people who who give us money? Thank you to Sam Beard. Thank you to Todd Randall. Thank you to Tommaso. Thank you to Michael Town. Thank you to Karen Knight. Thank you to Ash Knight. Thank you to Dylan Stevens. Thank you to Carlin Bud. And thank you to Game Boy Dad. You are our top tier Patreons. We love you so much. If you'd like to help us over on Patreon, if you'd like to see you like what you've seen tonight, head over there. (laughs) Throw us some bucks. If you can't, don't worry. Just watch us free on Twitch or VOD on YouTube. And we've got Dino More coming back for all our Patreons. Woo! That's right. Patreon exclusive show coming really, really soon. So head on over to patreon.com backslash hack the dino, sign up, and you can get exclusive content like this. <laughs> Jesus. That really, that was 
piercing. I'm glad we're going to hear that three times this next two weeks. <coughs> Do you want to see my exclusive content? No, but I'd oh. like to hear what else you've got pluggable-wise. Oh, pluggable. Uh, uh, you can shoot over to Instagram. Check us out at Floppy Plays Games. Have a look at some of the things that I, I purchase, I own, I play sometimes. Uh, occasionally finish and just stuff I like because it's cool. <laughs> Uh, Dan, you got anything to plug? Um, if you like horror movies and stuff like that, please head over to uh, Terrorvision Horror Podcast, which is me and Jennifer the Batman Strand um, talking about horror films. It's an audio one, so we're on you know all the major podcasting services. Just search for Terrorvision Horror Podcast, and you'll find us. We also have a YouTube channel and a Instagram, and we've got an email. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So if you like horror, check it out. It seems good. It's weekly. Every Tuesday it goes up. Braden. Yeah, if you like movies that aren't horror movies, but also sometimes horror movies, but also not so much, uh, if you want to keep up to date with the latest movie news, especially with movies coming back to theatres soon, fingers crossed, hopefully, we're wondering what's going on, uh, you can go and check out Millennial Movie Talk, or MMT, uh, where myself and three of my mates, we all catch up and we talk about the latest and greatest in movie news and what we've been watching. And if you like retro, I do a thing where I talk about retro things with other people, like Dean Rankin, who's the artist on the, the Simpsons comics. He, he was a good time, and you can listen to that by searching Retro Trigger and all the other words that, that come alongside Retro Trigger, like... Dragon retro. Ball Z. Yeah, that one. Do that. Anyway, we've been Hack the Dino. This has been our Critical Path and our new show. You can catch us on youtube.com backslash hack the dino. Please leave a comment. Please leave a little thumb up thingy and uh, subscribe and like and share with your friends and help us get that algorithm working for us because it's being very naughty. Uh, you can head on over to twitch.tv backslash hack the dino and follow us there. It doesn't cost you anything. Absolutely free, 100%. All you have to do is press the follow button to be notified when we go live because all of our live recordings are happening there now, baby. And if you don't like our faces, cool, completely understand. I get it. I hear it a lot. You can go to SoundCloud and you can go to Spotify and you can go to iTunes and you can just listen to us because one thing we do really, really well is words. So words are our thing. And if you like words as much as we like words, then our words are going to like your words. Thank words. you very much. Brayden, please. <laughs>